Hello, my name is Ken Awondo. I am the Clinical Trials Laboratory Manager, Kenya Medical Research Institute Wellcome Trust Collaboration in Kilifi, Kenya. Today, I would like to share with you the role of laboratory in clinical trials. At the end of this session, I expect to discuss and explain the role of laboratory in clinical trial studies. Two, clinical trial studies that needs laboratory services. Three, who needs to use the laboratory in clinical trials. Four, types of laboratories in clinical trial studies. Five, the benefits of using laboratory services for clinical trials. And finally, discuss the challenges facing laboratories in the clinical trials. Where do we need clinical trials? If there is a place in this world that needs clinical trials most, it is in the resource poor settings in the developing world. Developing world needs drugs and vaccines. Developing world is the host to numerous infectious diseases, nutritional conditions, and genetically inherited diseases. These diseases include among the following, among others, the following. Common protozoan diseases, which includes malaria, helminths, trypanosomiasis, filariasis, schistosomiasis, and bacterial, common bacterial diseases in the developing world includes dysentery, cholera, tuberculosis, gonorrhea, syphilis, leprosy, and many others. We also have common viral diseases in the developing world, and this includes human immunodeficiency virus, yellow fever, hepatitis, dengue fever, Ebola, and many more. There are also common fungal diseases in the developing world, and this includes dermatophytosis, mycosis, histoplasma, histoplasmosis, and blast blastomycosis, among others. So, it is not only infectious diseases that affect developing countries. We also have inherited diseases, which includes sickle cell anemia, or sickle cell disease, the thalassemias, G6PD deficiency disease. We also have nutritional diseases that affect, uh, that are common in the developing world. It includes anemia, malnutrition, and many more. So with all these diseases in the developing world, what perhaps the question that one may ask is, what is the role of laboratory in clinical trials? Let's just look at a scenario of a clinical trials. There are five fundamental elements that are required in a clinical trials. And in that scenario, patient is in the center of it. And we have disease, as or the second element, we have drug vaccines, drug or vaccines that are under the trials or uh, under investigations. We also have investigator, the person who is going to play the role of investigating uh, um, the, the new drug, uh, drug investigation. And finally, we also have the laboratory. And there is no way that a successful clinical trials can be done without the ac uh, active participation of the laboratory. The role of laboratory is much more than just performing the test. It is not just a matter of mixing the sample and reagents and putting the analyzer and getting the lab results. It goes much more than just re uh, getting the laboratory results. And we're going to look at some of the roles that laboratory plays in the clinical trials. Role number one, diagnosis and prognosis of diseases. Traditionally, Laboratory is expected to identify what causes the diseases. That has been done and to date that continues. Laboratory is also expected to determine whether individual is healthy or sick to participate in the trial study. Laboratory is expected to predict disease outcome and that in, in sometimes referred to in medical terms as prognosis. We also expect, expected to determine likely risk factors to affect the study participant. So laboratory plays a very important role in as far as diagnosis and prognosis of diseases is concerned for the clinical trials. Secondly, laboratory plays a very important role in inclusion-exclusion criteria for study participants. Most clinical studies 
Most clinical trial studies outline the inclusion and exclusion criteria in the study protocol. Some of these criteria are lab-based parameters. And for the laboratory to play a role, lab determines who should be enrolled into the study. Third, uh, the third role that laboratory plays in uh, clinical trials includes uh, determination of baseline blood parameters. The baseline is the initial parameter measurement that is obtained prior to the administration of the product under investigation, for example, vaccine or drug. The baseline is set for future follow-up during the study. And in fact, subsequent parameters are judged on the basis of the parameter, baseline parameter. The laboratory also plays a very crucial role in monitoring the safety of the study participants. Major objective of clinical trials uh, includes uh, assessing the safety and toxicity of the product. In fact, this is one of the major objectives of doing the clinical trials. And the laboratory perform hematological profiles and biochemical profiles to assess the safety of the study participants. The laboratory also plays a very major role in demonstration of the efficacy of the product under investigation. This is the second major objective of the clinical trials as a study, and it is to demonstrate the ability of the drug or the vaccine to effectively um, uh, bring effect in therapeutic. Laboratory performs follow-up tests to show if the study, if the patient is improving or getting worse after the administration of the trial product. The laboratory also plays a very important role in determination of the interaction of the product with the body. Laboratory collects, processes, stores, and transports the sample to the reference laboratories for further pharmacokinetic analysis. Pharmacokinetic analysis is the performed to determine how long the drug, how long the new drug can last in the body. The pharmacokinetic is also done to assess the drug mode of action during the preclinical phase and during the initial phase of the trial and up to the end of the study trial. The laboratory also plays a very important role in sample processing, storage, and shipment. The laboratory stores samples for future testing. It ships the some thousands of samples to national reference and uh, uh, um, international laboratories across the world. Let's look at the role of laboratory in disease control and prevention. It is only in the laboratory that diseases can be characterized. Characterization of emerging and re-emerging diseases pathogens is done in the laboratory. And without the laboratory, we cannot be able to know who, who is, uh, 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 sorry, uh, without the laboratory, we cannot be able to know what kind of pathogens is affecting the human being. The laboratory also plays a very important role in the control of drug-resistant pathogens by doing sensitivity and resistance to the, to, the, to the drugs. Laboratory also plays a very important role in public health decision-making. The reports that are produced from the disease surveillance are often the basis for the decision making in public health issues. Now, somebody, one may ask which clinical trials needs laboratory. One of the trials that needs laboratory is the drug studies. It could be a drug study that is aimed at developing the drug for malaria, or developing a drug against tuberculosis, or developing a drug for treatment of HIV. Clinical studies that needs uh, a laboratory also includes vaccine studies. It may be a study that de is developing the vaccine study for HIV, for malaria, or for hepatitis. Nutritional studies that needs also needs laboratory studies, also needs laboratory. Nutritional studies that includes anemia and food nutrients are can only be analyzed in the laboratory. Other areas that needs laboratory includes epidemiological studies. This includes disease surveillance, disease characterization to subtypes, strains, and species, disease patterns and distribution. Now, who in the clinical trial study needs laboratory? There are various, there are a number of people who need the, the laboratory. This includes the clinicians, and in clinicians include doctors, nurses, the nutritionist needs, needs laboratory. The study participants need laboratory. 
Ansari participants include the volunteers, the patients, and their relatives. Study monitors need laboratory to ensure that the data collected is good quality. Also, in the also uh, among the people who need the study, uh, the laboratory includes the study sponsors. Study sponsors need laboratory for proof of efficacy and for proof of safety. So, what types of laboratories are used by the clinical trials? That is one question that we want to look at at this session. One of the type of laboratory that uh, is um, used by the clinical trials includes the local laboratories. Local laboratories are used by the investigators for routine sample testing. Usually, they are located close to the investigator or at, or at the study site. They are mainly hospital laboratories. They ship samples to reference laboratories for specialized tests. The second category of, uh, of laboratories that are used by clinical trials are the regional or national laboratories. They are used by all investigators in a multi-center trials conducted in certain regions. Usually, they are contracted laboratories that organizes efficient sample transport. The third category of laboratories uh, that are uh, used by clinical trials include the central laboratory. The central laboratory is used by investigators in a trial covering a large region. It may be the whole world. It may be covering the whole world. It may be covering the whole continent. It may be covering a, a wide region. They offer real-time online access to national and global trial data. And the final category includes the network of laboratories. This consists of regional laboratories that specialize in particular assays. What are some of the requirements that you may, uh, that one may require for all these laboratories? It is ideal if the laboratories operates to the same standards and procedures. If they operate under the on the same equipment and instruments, same methodologies, using the same similar reagents and kits, reporting as in the same procedures, and all these are we will contribute to the same database formats, considering the lab units that are used in these laboratories. So, what are the benefits and challenges of clinical trials laboratories? One of the benefits that you get in using the clinical laboratories include um, evidence-based. Laboratory provides scientific evidence to back up the data. It uses diagnostic tests for an intervention. And it also um, provides um, a, 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 to a, a clinician decision is based, decision ba is based on evidence provided. Uh, clinical laboratories provide correct treatment. In you use clinical laboratories, there is no trial and error. Patients and participants obtain maximum care. Challenges facing laboratories in clinical trials. Uh, one of the challenges that clinical trials are facing, um, laboratories in clinical trials are facing, includes a lack of standardization. The interpretation of lab results is made difficult if they are not standardized. If they are not standardized, no lab reference values for developing countries. This in developing countries mostly uses uh, uh, reference ranges that have been developed by, in the Western by the Western countries. The other challenge, big challenge that is facing uh, clinical trials uh, includes a uh, quality system. There are inadequate uh, resources in the developing world, and therefore they have not developed the quality systems, and this is a big, a huge challenge. Lack of capacity building. Labs in developing countries lack uh, trained staff, lack of network among laboratory personnel. The other uh, challenge includes um, inappropriate equipment, lack of equipment, poorly maintained equipment, shortage of um, service contract. These are among the challenges that are facing the clinical uh, laboratories in the clinical trials. And with all this, um, we should join hands to have or a program of Global Health Trial Laboratory Program. Thank you.